the hero or the big muscular warrior that always seems to save the day just in time with pure strength brutality and sustain is a force to be reckoned with wielding big weapons and with big i mean big The biggest and most hard hitting weapon in the game essentially, while being insanely tanky and dealing massive damage is the way of the pure strength build. The hero is not concerned with summons or buffs or other types of gimmicks meant for peasants. Time is money and we don't have time to do anything but to smash everything in our pet completely into the ground. And today I will show you the most powerful and OP pure strength build that is incredibly fun to use and more importantly that you can make at the very start of the game, as always. So for the pure strength or beefy warrior that just smashes everything in its path to a pulp, you will want to go with the hero class. It has probably some of the best starting stats in the game, high strength, high vigor and high endurance, so exactly what we need. For your keepsake it does not matter what you take, but as always the golden seed is good just for the free extra flask at the start of the game. When you load into the game you'll see that you get a shield and an axe you can immediately throw them in the bin the axe is just too small look at this thing we can't use that stuff and nobody got time to use a shield when we can just destroy everything and incoming damage will only scratch us at the most so what you want to do right off the bat is go to our favorite location in the game Kaelid. Kaelid seems to always have the answers for everything and anything so for this build we will have to go there as well first off make sure to go to the gate front runes to talk to Melina to get your mount then afterwards you want to go to this spot to pick up the golden pickled fowl food and after you've done that you want to go to this spot exactly when you arrive at this spot exactly you'll find a carriage with a chest inside of it that you can loot and you will get the morning star weapon now we're just one second away from our big party starting speaking of parties i want to give a shout out to today's sponsor raid shadow legends and there is a reason for a party because raid shadow legends is celebrating their third anniversary this month so congratulations to them in these three years raid established itself as one of the most popular and content rich rpg games they've added a bunch of crazy stuff to the game in these past three years for example the Doom Tower which is a game mode with over 120 levels filled with new and terrifying bosses to slay. They also added all kinds of fun heroes with unique abilities to play around with and you can see from all these sketches that they also have very cool designs. Then they also added the new Shadowkin faction which consists out of a tribe of warriors from the far east, probably the coolest looking faction in the game in my opinion. And finally they also added a bunch of challenging bosses to the game and when I say bosses I can't omit mentioning the Hydra. The Hydra clan boss is the newest, biggest and scariest addition to raid and this monster has multiple heads with each head having different abilities so good luck defeating that but if you do so you will get really nice rewards as you see raid shadow legends offer something for every type of player and since this month is our three year anniversary they have all kinds of cool things right now in the game I'm talking free gifts for everyone, new champions, new artifact sets, special events and tournaments with big prizes and therefore it is the best time to try it out and I got you covered because if you hit my link in the description or scan my QR code right here on the screen then you'll get a special birthday package worth $40, we're talking 3 free champions at once, Misery Court, Tiger Soul, Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews and 10 Spirit XP Brews. So enjoy all of that and let's get back to the video. Now that you have the Morningstar weapon go to the Dragon Burnt Runes, here you want to take the Teleporter Chest, it will teleport you to Kaelid, surprise surprise, nobody knew that at this point in time. It will specifically teleport you to the Celia Crystal Tunnel and when you get here just run outside, ignore every enemy and when you get outside you want to move through Kaelid something like this, you want to unlock the map like this basically because later in this video there is a bunch of stuff that we need to pick up in Kaelid and they will be close to the sites of graces that you see on the map right now. When you finish following this path you will end up at Fort Ferret and here you want to pick up the Radican Source Seal. So when you get to the fort, go inside of it, run to the ladder ignore every single enemy that you see here and when you get to the ladder climb up loot the chest and pick up the medallion piece this is very important for later so don't forget about it and then just move as shown till you can jump down the gap after that you'll want to take a right turn and keep running till you can jump on the pretty sneaky pathway right here then you move forwards and you will finally be able to jump down and pick up the Radican Sword Shield. This is a gold tier talisman that is also going to be very good for a pure strength build because it gives us plus 5 in stats for all the relevant stats and gives us plus 5 in dexterity to meet the requirements of the weapon that we're going to use. So it is a no-brainer pickup and you want to get it. Now go outside, kill Grayol, the big dragon with your morning star, which proc split, and when he's close to dying, make sure to pop the gold pickled fowl food for the plus 30% increase in runes, then get all those juicy runes. And now we've opened the build. You'll want to invest the points of the runes as following. Get 27 endurance, get about 25 vigor, and then put the rest into strength. We will get all the strength damage we need and more from our weapon upgrades, affinities, pickups, and the way we actually 
actually use our weapon shown later in this video so we don't really need to put many points in it for now and instead prioritize endurance so our stamina doesn't run out so quickly when using big weapons and you want to compensate for that as much as possible and it makes it possible to actually get the tanky gear that we are going to get later on which is very important as well and then the vigor is just to make sure that you are beefy at the start and can sustain hits. Now that we have the template of our build done, it's time to pick up our weapon. For this you want to go to the Kalem Rune site of grace and when you arrive there you will see a caravan right next to you. Go to it, ignore the enemies if you want and just make sure to loot that chest in there. Because inside of the chest will be the greatsword and this thing is an absolute monster. And with the changes to colossal weapons in the game it became even better after patch 1.04. Even in its most standard and unoptimized form with no upgrades whatsoever this thing will do a lot of damage to everything in your path. In addition to normal damage it has insane poise damage as well and its range is crazy because yeah look at the size of this thing. And after the recent patch it attacks faster. It covers faster and when you two-hand it it will deal more damage as well compared to before which is really nice because we want to two-hand it at this part in the game for sure when doing so we get a 1.5 multiplier to our strength and thus we meet the requirements to actually wear it it makes the points that we invested in our stats very efficient and more importantly all our attacks will now deal more damage as well and it just looks badass to handing a sword, you can't deny it. And you can already start using it in its current form. You will just brute force yourself through everything and kill all the enemies in your path. But really, this is just the start of the build. And you might also think Greatsword, that's a really generic, boring and bland name for a sword that's supposedly so OP. This guy is just trying to scam. Well... For all the weeps out there, this is your weapon. And if you're not a weep, well, it's still a very epic sword, okay? The Greatsword, or Guts Greatsword, should I rather say, is really great because it out damages its competition. And many of the other colossal swords in the game are pickups that you can only get much later on in the game. While well, you can actually get the Greatsword at the very start of the game. And yes, movesets are a thing, but I find the Greatsword's moveset also one of the best in that regard as well, for sure. You will also see that there are a bunch of colossal swords with fixed Ashes of Wars, meaning you can change it. And some of those Ashes of Wars are quite lackluster, but thankfully you can also change the Greatsword's Ash of War. And that's something we're definitely going to do because there is something very OP out there. But before we get into that, let's first upgrade our Greatsword. You want to go to Fort Hyde for this and get the left part of the medallion right here. Now if you watched my Samurai build, you know that I thought of a way to get a weapon that needs smithing stones for upgrades to plus 15 by only going to two locations. And that's what you want to do here as well, because it is the least tedious way to upgrade your sword. First of all, go to Lernia. Here is a drawn out pad to get there if you don't know how to get there from Limgrave. Then go to the Araya Crystal Tunnel right here. Go to the bottom of this cave, just ignore everyone. And then finally when you get to the bottom you will see the Crystallian boss. Now usually this boss is very annoying, but in this case he's a complete joke as our great sword makes quick work of him and destroys his crystallized armor really fast. So when you destroy him you will get the bell bearing for buying smithing stone 1 and 2. So that's nice. After that you want to go to the Seal Tunnel in the Altus Plateau region. Which thanks to picking up both parts of the medallion you can now access very easily at the very start of the game. In the Seal Tunnel move like this to get to the chest. In the chest you will find the second bell bearing you need to buy Smithing Stone 3 and 4. Then start farming the guys here because they drop smithing stone number 5. Do that until you have 12 smithing stone number 5. And by farming these guys you will also get all the runes you need to buy all the smithing stones and actually upgrade your sword at the smith. I highly recommend you to upgrade your swords for every few thousands of runes that you get as the difference in clearing speed is going to be much faster with say a plus 1 great sword compared to a plus 6 great sword or a plus 6 great sword to a plus 11 great sword and so forth and so forth. If you want to farm less you can also get 8 smithing stone number 5s in the Cilia crystal tunnel that we teleported to earlier in this video to get to Kaelid. Doing that will only make you need 4 more smithing stone number 5s from the miners so it's definitely a big cut on the number of enemies you have to farm. Now that you have upgraded your weapon it's time to pick up the Ash of War that you'll want to use. For this you want to go to Fort Gale in yet again Kaelid. When I said this region has all the good stuff I wasn't lying. But easiest way to approach this fort is from the north then when you get there go up the stairs past the gate ignore the annoying guy shooting his purple just on you just move forward till you get to the ladder. When you climb up you will see Simba after he went down the dark path and became addicted to Crystal Mad. This guy is our next target. He's very hyperactive and is quite tanky but our upgraded Greatsword will make quick work of him thankfully. And after that you are blessed with the Lion's Claw Ash of War. This thing is the definition of OP. It smashes your opponent completely into the ground. Face first, humiliates them and gives you enough time to take a big dump on them. 
it has insane damage but it has insane poise damage as well and if you don't know how poise works or what it actually means then check out the video i made about poise it's only eight minutes and you will know everything you need to know and why poise damage is so great and thus why this ash of war is crazy good as well Add to that that it has insane hyper armor when you use it, meaning that if even 8 million enemies would attack you at the same time, you will still get it off and won't get interrupted and get all that damage. And the fact that we actually have enough sustain, we can just tank everything that comes our way when using this ability. Finally, it got a major buff after patch 1.04. It has now increased casting speed and decreased recovery time, which means you can just spam this absolute monster and get all that damage in quickly, reliably and make every enemy break their stance really quickly as well. You want to pick up this thing as soon as possible. Now after doing that you want to go and kill Margit. You will just completely destroy him with Lion's Claw within second. And as you can see stance break him as well very easily and very quickly. You want to do this right now because it gives us a second talisman slot. As you can see we are pretty much naked at this point in time with the hero's armor set. And yeah having a six pack is cool and fun and all and yeah 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 but it won't help out against sharp objects. Now we want to pick up the gear with the absolute best defensive stats and poise that you can get at the very start of the game. This is going to be the badass banished knight set. Yet again we want to go to Caleb for this right near the cathedral of dragon communion. There are going to be two knights here that you can farm and get the entire set by just farming them. So start stomping these guys and get the set. It's going to be really fun for you just seeing how powerful the sword is right now. Before you equip the entire set you'll also want to use our second talisman slot to equip the great charge arsenal talisman. Otherwise you will be forced into heavy load territory as it is a heavy armor set, which we don't want of course, we want those nice medium rolls. The Great Jar's Arsenal Talisman is actually a late game talisman, but you can get it at the very start of the game, in the northern part of Caelid from the big ass jar after defeating 3 invaders. Now if this is completely new for you and you don't know how to get here or what to do to win versus the 3 late game invaders, I got you covered because I went into great detail in my fate build video in how to do all of that, so I will put a timestamped link in the description for those that did not watch my fate build. I just want to add one thing, if the enemy gets stuck at the wall and moving around doesn't really help, try jumping as well because it does work as the good old bait. Now that we have our desired gear set and our talismans done, your defensive stats will be extremely high as you can see compared to before while still being in the medium load category and you will have enough points to get past the poise break point to start resisting stance breaking hits so that's very nice as well. For the flask you definitely want to pick up the strength crystal tier in Limgrave, this is going to give us plus 15 in strength with our two handed multiplier for 3 whole minutes. Minutes, and with only spending 2 points into strength this will mean that we're going to be effectively level 50 in strength just with our setup right at the start of the game. And then don't forget we also have upgraded our greatsword all the way to plus 15 so it's going to deal massive damage. Then you want to pick up the green burst crystal tier which will be really nice for stamina recovery and as you know swinging with big swords takes quite some stamina so that's definitely a very nice pickup to really help out with that. For stats you want to get some more mine to be able to use lion's claw comfortably without running out of fp so quickly. Doing so will make the whole experience a lot smoother so I would suggest to put a prior on that right away and get at least 20. Strength, you want to soft cap yourself at 54 for the two handed setup and then get 40 vigor at least as well so you'll just be able to tank everything. I will cover the late game build in the follow up video as always but for now this build is going to completely destroy everything for you in your path until you reach that point and probably will just also destroy everything in the late game as well to be honest but you know me I like optimization so I will be making a follow up video. Now with this build you will be insanely powerful, your damage output is going to be insane and it's just a lot of fun to play. Whether you use your regular hits, your charged hits or your ash of war, everything you do is going to deal a lot of damage. Then both your weapons attacks as well as your lion's claw have insane poise damage, so you can easily stance break any enemy that challenges you and make quick work of them. Add to that that lion's claw has a really fast gas speed and hyper armor so you can just spam it for reliable and quick damage. And finally you're insanely tanky and have great armor so you have a lot of sustain and survivability while you destroy everything in your path.